And you know, since it's a Sunday, I don't want to hit you with anything too heavy duty or grim or scary. I figured I better keep it light. So I've decided to ditch my plans to spend the next half an hour giving an academic lecture about China's Qing Dynasty and what, how it fell into chaos and disrepair because it produced too many bureaucrats and elites for the system to absorb and instead decided to spend all its money policing the population to make sure nobody spread misinformation about how poorly things were going. Obviously a situation that has nothing to do with contemporary America or Australia for that matter. So instead, I thought I'd talk to you about a light and breezy topic, an idea that is, if it were not so serious, almost funny. That's right, the possibility of a President Kamala Harris. You heard me. And as the charade of the Joe Biden administration peters out, and the people behind the scenes realize that this little show, call it puppetry of the presidency, can't go forever, <laughs> the question is becoming ever more urgent in Democratic Party circles about, what do we do? I mean, the deadline for the Democrats is fast approaching to get someone else up before the primaries and caucuses, though there is an argument the Democrats could make the switch at the Democrat convention in about a year's time. But the question is, if not Sleepy Joe, who do they give it to? Well, I mean, there's California Governor Gavin Newsom, who has been walking point for the Biden campaign for months now. But the only problem is that Gavin Newsom, well, he has ruined a state that used to be an economic and cultural powerhouse and turned it into a basket case that produces nothing but junkies and woke remakes of classic films. There's also the problem that the image of a white male stepping in the road of a black woman, well, that could be a bit problematic, as Fox's Greg Gutfeld explained. Kamala's allies are warning Gavin Newsom to stay away from a presidential run or they'll tar and feather him as a racist. One strategist saying, quote, when you had people who were trying to test the waters, the party rose up and made it clear to those individuals who are mostly white men that to disrespect a vice president would not be well received by women and people of color within the party. They got a little bit of a smack in the face. Now, some people have also talked about Pete Buttigieg, but the transport system in America under his watch has become a similar disaster, punctuated by air traffic breakdowns and that horrific tra train smash and environmental apocalypse at East Palestine, Ohio, earlier this year. A place, by the way, Joe Biden promised to visit, but as of today, still hasn't managed to attend. Oh, and there's one more thing about Buttigieg. He drives an electric Mustang, which is pretty much grounds to take away his citizenship in my book. <laughs> Never mind disqualifying him from the presidency. All of this brings us then to Kamala Harris. And yes, I concede, she is an idiot. <laughs> Here's the thing. Who doesn't love a yellow school bus, right? Can you raise your hand if you love a yellow school bus, right? Just, there's something about the, and, and most of us, many of us went to school on the yellow school bus, right? I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been, you know? Always ask, is there a Venn diagram for this? I'm telling you, you it will, it's fascinating when you do. So Venn diagram, those three circles, right? Okay, so she's a dope. We all acknowledge this. But if anything is certain, if history, especially the last three years, have taught us anything, it is that you can stand up an absolute idiot for president and rack up a whole ton of votes and get that person, him or her, over the line. Watch me. If you think I don't have the energy level or the mental acuity. The best way to get something done, if you... If it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway, from from uh, uh, Char excuse me from Charlotte, one uh, another line going from in, in Florida down to Tampa of uh, Putin's kleptocracy, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's not forget that Joe Biden was, like Kamala Harris, considered a completely unelectable dud 
when he went into the 2020 primaries. He had already run three failed presidential campaigns at that time, but this time, 2020, was different. Why? Because they realized that he was a good frontman for the Democrats. And this is how it works to be also a frontman for Barack Obama, who quite correctly assumed that Biden could be a prop by which he could keep his hand in in Washington. That's why the Washington blob, the swamp, the elites rallied around him. Media and bureaucracy and intelligence agencies combined not because they thought Joe Biden was brilliant or an original thinker. No, because for the blob, that's the last thing they want, because they wanted him to be there as someone they could control, which, mark my words, has set up the playbook for Kamala Harris or her backers as Joe Biden's mental and moral failings pile up and become ever more apparent. Again, the point of this is to remember that at this level of high stakes, big money, big power, presidential politics, particularly on the Democrat side, it is not about trying to find the best candidate with the best ideas. Just ask Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Instead, it is about getting an electable warm body into the chair so that all the various organs of what Donald Trump called the swamp and what others might call the deep state can keep doing what they're doing. Now, the fact that Republicans, and I suspect a lot of viewers right now as well, think that Kamala Harris is such a lightweight is what makes her that much more of a threat, especially if Donald Trump is the nominee and all the stops are pulled out to get in his way. Remember again, back in 2020, when the Democrats were emboldened by big tech and big money, they ran a campaign to strengthen democracy, i.e. make sure that the wrong person, Donald Trump, didn't win. Remember that? And they did this not by election fraud, but by using covid era voting rules and lawfare and every interpretation of the statutes they could find to tip the scales. And right now, just to tell you about that, because it bears on what's going to happen next, a trial is underway in the U.S. surrounding the disbarment of John Eastman, one of Donald Trump's attorneys who argued the election was stolen. Now, in this trial, reporter Rachel Alexander has been covering it and revealed that in Wisconsin, just one state of 50, millions of dollars poured into the state from Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg mm. in, other, in other words, to put workers in election offices to check rules, see who had voted or not, determine whether or not those people were likely to vote Republican or Democrat, and then send a volunteer out to try and harvest that ballot. And that was in just one state alone. You see how it works? The president here is just a figurehead for power, for big tech, for the deep state, for the swamp. And all the fights about policies and personality is just noise. All of this needs to concern Republicans desperately, because we know they don't always fight well at that game, and because we know Democrats have a real skill at winning what should be otherwise unwinnable elections. So again, President Kamala could never happen, right? Well, again, that's the same thing they said about President Biden. <laughs> As for Kamala, she's ready. Joe Biden's going to be fine, so that is not going to come to fruition. But let us also understand that every vice president, every vice president, understands that when they take the oath, that they must be very clear about the responsibility they may have to take over the job of being president. I am no different.